What's going on fam? It's your boy KP and I'm back with another video. All praise and credit due to the most high God and his son, Yeshua Hamashiach. Man, I'm trying to tell you King Jesus is the greatest one to ever do it. You watching my videos, like the content is hitting home with you. Please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notification bells to be notified of new content. You're more than welcome to share any of my videos on your platforms. Ah uh, man, this is a... Uh, Got a lot of stuff on my mind, but I'm waiting for the spirit to to uh, expand on a couple things before I make some additional videos. I was looking through and um, my online storage hard drive, you know, YouTube deleted one of my last channel, which uh, right when I came back from the kingdom of God, man, I had deep teachings on every subject. But I found one of them on, you know. Pretty much the teaching is about my experience with uh, false religious spirits and gang stalking, like how the spirit of Azazel hops into other people. And if you how if you don't know the real king, the real king of light, Satan knows that and he will punk you right off of, of fear and um, until the real king comes upon you. But uh, I have a personal experience with that. And it uh. I remember the first time reading it in the Bible, man, it cracked me up because these demons had beat the living daylights out of me. I was so scared. I remember I was so skinny. I was looking like a crackhead because I was eating like once every six days because every time I left my house, the spirit of Azazel would just hop into people and would own my soul. And I remember like being so scared, like they would just tell me things I had did when I was eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old, like people in a store that didn't even know each other would just group up in the conversation and just mess with me. And, um, I can laugh about it now because I know what it is. And, uh, you know, after you overcome Satan, it's, there's no more tricks left. That becomes the amazing thing. Once that, once, once you come face to face with Satan and you overcome him, um, you start to see that he doesn't stop. You know, he calms away down, but you realize he can't make up anything new and it almost becomes comical to you um, because, you know, the, the fear of death has left you and, and you become, you know, bold as a lion. You don't care what you say to him, to, to a demon possessed person, because, this, you know, our physical realm is really governed by this, by the spiritual realm and in the spiritual realm. Once the true Holy Spirit comes upon you, you are filled with light and a demon possessed person is filled with darkness. So although we operate in the spirit in the in the physical realm, the spiritual realm knows the spiritual realm and they and they truly fear the children of the light. God's chosen people, his anointed people, people containing the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, because uh when a, when a, you know, our bodies are just vessels, vessels for the spiritual realms to inhabit, to manifest out which God you serve, whether you serve, whether you're a vessel of Satan, you're going to express uh, the customs of the satanic kingdom through your vessel here on earth. If you're a vessel of God, you're going to express the kingdom of God and the customs uh, of righteousness here on earth. And that, that is, I realize that is a very difficult understanding to, well, you know what? It's impossible to come to that kind of understanding when you are blind spiritually and can only see in the physical realm. Cause although you, although you see, although seeing you see not, and although you hear and you do not understand, um, that's what that's what the Bible means about, you know, when 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 Jesus healed the blind and the deaf could hear. He's talking about spiritually that you, people were spiritually blind a lot of the times. There's a couple carnal um, miracles where a person was really blind and it reads like that. But a lot of, most of the time, man, they're talking about a person was spiritually blind and spiritually deaf and they couldn't hear these things. And and a demon possessed person is, is operating in the spirit realm with spiritual understanding. Um, like the third eye, it's a single eye. But if you can see spiritual things with even a single eye, you have spiritual sight. But a single eye in the spirit realm, just like a single eye in this physical realm, 
it's going to be deficient. It's going to lack some certain things when it comes to depth perception. Like a physical, if a person only has one eye, their depth perception is going to be off. So demon possessed people operating in the spirit realm with the single third eye, they, they understand spiritual things, but the depth of the spiritual understanding is very limited. It's like, it's like very nearsighted. And when, when the Holy Spirit comes on you with the gift of prophecy, it's the equivalent of seeing in the spirit realm with two eyes. You can see depth of spiritual things. And that's how the spirit, spirit of prophecy operates. You're able to see things deep for the meaning and see what occurrences will manifest from actions today. Either days, weeks, or years down the road. Um, and that's, that's only something I realize that's hard to explain. The things I know are from my personal experience. Um, and to give you a parable of how experience always trumps explanation, which would you rather have working on your car? A mechanic that's only read books and he's read like books on changing brakes, uh, doing tune-ups, this, that, and the other. That's the person that's only read the Bible and has no spiritual experience. Do you want to take advice from that person or would you have that person work on your car versus a mechanic that's been in the garage for 20 years doing brakes, doing tune-ups, replacing shocks, but they might not even be able to read. But when it comes to practical, practical application of being a mechanic, the experience always trumps an explanation. And, um, you know, that's, that's truly my, my experience of coming, of coming to God. It's an experience. Um, it's, it's, I'm fortunate to have been gang stalked at a very high level and came face to face with Satan. Although, although it was terrifying, um, I'm truly blessed because I was gained, I gained the experience of, of, conquering Satan and operating in the spirit realm and understanding spiritual things way, way before I read the Bible and these things were um, explained to me. It was kind of like a reminder of all the things I've experienced and kind of expounds and allows you to, to go back and reflect on certain areas of the book that remind you of the experience that you lived. So um, all is well. I'll be on making some more videos um, here soon, but I did find that old video of, of the story when I was being gang stalked on the street and I watched it, I watched it and I laughed because I remember how uh, fearful I was when, um, fallen angel spirits were manifesting in people. So, uh, I'll put that video right, right, by right after this, when I link it in, it was probably about a year ago. I made that video. Um, but I hope you enjoy it again, please hit like subscribe notification bell, share these videos, man. We're truly in the end times. Um, we don't have much time left. Phase two of this new world order is about to crank up. So I remind him, man, I, I urge all of you guys get right with God, man. Ask the most high to reveal himself to you personally. Cause he will, he will do it. And, um, you're going to need that personal relationship to not give him the fear. Cause that's what this new world order is truly about. So in, until, uh, Next time, family, stay equipped in the full armor of God, covered in the blood, filled with the spirit in the name of the son and the power of the true living God, because there is power in his name and his and he lives in you through his spirit. Stay blessed, man. Here you go. YouTube, what's up? First off, you know, I'd like to admit that uh, Jesus Christ was God's son, came in the flesh. He was crucified for our sins, placing us in the new blood covenant of eternal life. After three days after his dying, he was rose from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Son of God. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm I'm reading, right? Like if any of y'all seen my other my other videos, y'all know I went through a crazy, crazy spiritual experience in January 2019. That's where I first knew the devil was real. And then Jesus saved me and I knew Jesus was real. Five years prior to that, I was just worshiping a God, generic God. I was going to Christian church. 
You know, I, I knew truth when I heard it, but I wasn't sold on the Jesus thing. It wasn't until them demons tore me out the frame. Them demons tore me out the frame. I was going around praying to God that it would stop. I was praying to God that these demons would stop coming after me, but I didn't know Jesus. I didn't know about the blood of Jesus. And it was just like the book in Acts where those Jewish priests of Sheba was going around casting out demons in the name that Paul preaches. I lived that scripture. I'd be out in public. Demons would manifest in people and own my soul. They knew everything about me. I'd be frozen and trembling, praying to God. Them demons was like, they was just looking at me. They would surround me in public. They was looking at me. They was like, we know Paul. We know Jesus. But who are you? Who are you? And they'd look at each other. They'd be like, he don't know. He don't know Jesus. Get him. Beat me up, run me up out of their neck at every time. That went on for about two and a half months. Demons. God sent the angel, came down there. I had heard the voice of God so many times. I was waiting. I was willing to die. And demons had tore my life up so bad. I didn't have nothing to live for. So I'm going to go out with a blaze of glory on something I believe in. Like, well, well kill me then, fool. If y'all can kill me, kill me. Shortly after that, God sent an angel, pulled me out. Wrote, wrote a bunch of the Bible on my heart. I went back and read the Bible, didn't know how I understood that stuff I was reading. It was like I was reading it for the second time. But you know, what happened in that process of going back reading, reading the Bible is a lot of things gets revealed to me that the false spirits are out here. You know, these, these false religious spirits that are running these churches got everybody running around. Nobody is seeking the truth on their own. And I wanted to share something with y'all. You know, first, first, you know, I want to read the scripture. This is uh, the epistle. First John, um, first John chapter two, verse 27. And it says, and I read the King James, right? People out here reading the NIV and a lot of stuff, a lot of words are changed in there. Like, why are you need to rewrite a book that's already written? They wrote that book in 1978, the NIV, and they didn't change the whole bunch of stuff around. Like, look. You ain't got to change a great book around. You ain't got to keep rewriting it, changing the words where we read it so you can read it. Like, look, God don't come to you. You come to God. So if you can't understand the book, you ask the Holy Spirit for guidance and understanding until you can understand the book. But let me get to this. I'm going to keep this video short, about 10 minutes. But uh, 1 John 2.27, it says, But the anointing which ye have received of him abided in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing teacheth you all things and is truth and is no lie. And even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. That's pretty much saying, man, the Holy Spirit will teach you everything you need to know. You don't need to go around asking pastors. You know what I mean? It's cool to get some advice, but your first Stop should be what the Holy Spirit is telling you, not what man is telling you. That's stop number one. That's the whole point of the Holy Spirit leading you into all truth. It lives in your heart, not in another man. Everyone has access to it. That is the new blood covenant. Everyone has access to the Holy Spirit, not the Old Testament, where, where just one priest could speak to God and he went in there once a year and sacrifice some animal for everybody's sins and, and did that. No, man, Jesus came so everyone would have access to the Holy Spirit and freedom from spiritual bondage. But man, this, this one is really hitting me home right now. You know, and it's the doctrines of man. Everybody, Jesus died on the cross. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus died on the cross. Like, really? Where are y'all getting at? I'm about to read to you a few scriptures right now. I'm going to read the scripture before and the scripture after, after the, the, the main point I'm talking about. So this is Acts 5 
verse 29 through 31, starting with 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance unto Israel and forgiveness of sins. Hang on. Now I'm in Acts 10 verses 38 through 40. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he both, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, who they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and shewed him openly. Okay, y'all still with me? This is Acts 13, verses 28 through 30. And though they found no curse of death in him, yet desired they polite that they should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead. Y'all still with me? All right. I'm going to go over to Gal Galatians. This is Galatians 3, verses 12 through 14. And the law is not a faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. The blessing of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we may receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So I'm, so I guess I'm the only one that, that, that reads the King James Bible. You don't even have to go back to the King James 16, 11 version. You can read just the regular old King James version, even the new King James version. If you read the NIV, these references about Jesus being hanged on a tree have all been changed to him being on a cross. Now. There's a deeper meaning to all of this, people. If you chase back the lineage of Jesus in the, in the 12 tribes of Israel, and if you just think for a moment that Jesus may have some brown skin, and the way that the, the devil and the fallen angels like to mock Jesus and put it right in your face, it's a reason brown people was hanging from trees in this country. But that's a whole nother video. Think about that for a minute. If they hung Jesus from a tree, who else they hang from a tree and why? Until next time. Read your Bibles for yourself. Read it for yourself. You go to church, they take three or four scriptures and they build a story around it to make you feel good. I will never preach somebody happy. I'll preach you free because that's what happened to me. The chains got cut loose. The ropes was broken. The yokes was busted from around my head. That's how you get out of spiritual captivity. It wasn't until I read it for myself till the book came alive and started to reveal things 
and you realize how much is just floating around out here in the air that people are believing like fools with the book right in front of you. It ain't like the book isn't right there. The book is right in front of you. Read it. Read it. Learn about all the pagan worship that is going on. Pagan worship, which is which is other god deity worship. Read about it. Christians are having Christmas. Matter of fact, Christians is only only mentioned in the in the Bible once. You know, disciple of of Christ. You know what that means, disciple of Christ? That means the disciplined ones that are following the teachings of Christ. And there ain't nothing about Christmas in the Bible. Like, I trust me, I didn't read the I didn't read the whole thing more than once. I cannot find what day Jesus was born on. I can't find it. This Christmas is pagan worship. This Easter is pagan worship. Valentine's Day, man, I just researched that. The god of Lupercasia or something like Luper, Lupercarbia, he was a, a fertility god. And then they water it all down. They water it all down to some Cupid, which is another god shooting people through the heart. And everybody's okay with it. Everybody is okay with, with these days that are paying homage to these Greek deities that have a different name. False god worship. Really? You need to you need to have a special day to worship Jesus, our Lord and Savior. You need Christmas to do that. That ought to let you know there's a problem right there. You worship God in spirit every day. You worship the most high in your spirit every day. You know. And I was an atheist. I was an atheist most of my life till age 39. And now I know why. I was getting a bunch of false messages from people. I always knew the truth. I always had a discernment spirit, even from a little kid. But in that, and that's probably what held me back from God. I was listening to people. Like I didn't know what the truth was, but I knew what they was telling me was a it didn't even sound right. What they was telling me was a lie. YouTube, I got so many videos to make. So many videos to make. So much stuff I want to get off of my chest. I was trapped in Satan's kingdom for 44 years as a POW. They ran every trick on me in the book. I learned so much being in there. I can tell I can tell you how they work, what time the shift change is, where the kitchen is at, what guard does what. People think there's one Satan like Santa Claus going around house to house terrorizing. Kingdom of Darkness is very organized army, my friend. I need to make a whole nother video. I'm not gonna get into it right now. But Jesus was hanged from a tree. And they want they want you to they want to change the story just a little bit, because if you can change it a little, if you can, if you can dilute the truth just a little bit, the truth has been diluted. Once you get the door open. They're going to run rampant. All praise to the most high. I thank God for sending his son to die for us, placing us in a new blood covenant of eternal life. The Holy Spirit is for real. It'll reveal things to you in your heart if you let it. Peace, you two. Till next time.